Hey everyone, welcome back to Tom's Music, where everything is mine. Everything you see and hear on this channel was written by me. I did it all. What? Hey, hey, easy. Okay, okay, easy. Um, that's a joke. It's a joke, guys. Obviously, that's a joke. I don't write music. These angry guys do. I talk about music. And today I want to talk about Beethoven? Can I talk about you? I can? Okay. Today I want to talk about Beethoven and Haydn. And I want to talk about the special relationship that they had. So come along, let me spin you a yarn. That was the second movement of Haydn's Symphony No. 94, nicknamed the Surprise Symphony. Can you guess what the surprise was? Yeah. Haydn wrote and premiered this piece while in London. In fact, his symphonies No. 93 through 98 make up what's called his first set of London symphonies. He was kind of a big deal in England. His music had dominated the concert scene there, and hardly were there any concerts that didn't feature works by him. He grew to a high level of fame, and during this time became really financially secure. Haydn and Beethoven first met in 1790 in Beethoven's hometown of Bonn, Germany, when Haydn was en route to London. The two wouldn't meet again until Haydn's return trip two years later. During this time, while Haydn was in London, Beethoven was writing music as well, but he was still young and he wasn't a prodigy. Also, not much, if anything, that he was writing was being published at this time. Here's one piece he did write called The Ritter Ballet. This was a piece commissioned by Count Waldstein, a German nobleman and one of Beethoven's earliest supporters. It was written for an event organized by the Count, for which he needed some ballet music. Despite being a supporter of Beethoven, Count Waldstein did take credit for writing this. Kind of a jerk move. And it wasn't discovered until some time later that it was in fact Beethoven who wrote it. But this isn't a video about Beethoven and Count Waldstein's relationship. Let's get back to Haydn. He's returning from London, he stops in Bonn again, and he's impressed with Beethoven. So much so that he suggests Beethoven come to Vienna to continue his musical studies with Haydn as his teacher. An arrangement is made and Beethoven moves to Vienna. He begins studying counterpoint and composition with Haydn, and is almost immediately dissatisfied with him as a teacher. Firstly, Haydn wasn't really Beethoven's first choice. Although there's no confirmation of this, there are accounts that Beethoven may have met Mozart back in the 1780s, and that he truly wanted to study with him. Also, there are accounts that Haydn assigned Beethoven something around 300 exercises to complete, a task that should have taken him, I don't know, a year? But Beethoven rinsed through them all in about six weeks. When I first read that, I thought, well, yeah, obviously he did. He's a musical genius. But no, however, they were riddled with mistakes. There were some corrected by Haydn, some not. And it seemed clear that Beethoven just went through them as fast as he could just to check the box and get them done. Beethoven probably wasn't the best student, but Haydn wasn't such a great and dedicated teacher either. He was busy. He had his own compositions to work on and commissions to complete. There's an account of Haydn suggesting to Beethoven that he write at the top of his works, composed by Beethoven, pupil of Haydn. I'm not sure if Haydn was graciously lending his name to Beethoven to help him out, or if Haydn saw and recognized the genius in Beethoven and wanted to put his name and attach it 
to Beethoven's. It's hard to say, but I imagine that Beethoven scoffed at this idea, as there are no works with Haydn's name in the title. Not long after Beethoven arrived, Haydn also took off for London again, for another concert tour. This is where he would write his second set of London symphonies, numbers 99 through 104. Those were clips from the first and last movement of Haydn's Symphony No. 104, aptly nicknamed the London Symphony. Back in Vienna, Beethoven was studying with other teachers, secretly though, so as to not upset Haydn. And he published his first opus, a set of piano trios. Now, despite their somewhat rocky relationship, Beethoven still respected Haydn. And when Haydn returned from London, he was eager to play these works for him. As the story goes, old 63-year-old Haydn, tired from his trip, sat down and listened to the young Beethoven perform his one and a half hour set of piano trios. Beethoven hurriedly went to Haydn to get his review, to which Haydn responded, eh, the third one needs a little work. Beethoven was horrified by this. Now, what Haydn probably meant is that it was just too difficult for the general public, because composers writing music in this time, they weren't just writing it to be listened to, they were writing for the public to play as well. Despite all these accounts of their strained relationship, there was no real beef between the two. Not that we know of. Beethoven's Opus 2, his second set of piano trios was dedicated to Haydn, so there definitely was a respect between the two. Although, my favorite Beethoven quote is, I never learned anything from Haydn. Well, that's going to do it for this video. What? What? Oh. What's this? This video is sponsored by Ludwig von Beethoven. Oh! Beethoven, you're sponsoring my video? Thanks, man. All right, let me read the copy. Are you tired of Mozart? Is classical music getting you down? Well, let me introduce to you the hottest new composer on the scene. Well, I'm not saying that. Okay. Let's get romantic tonight with Ludwig von Beethoven. What? Do it better? 
Let's get romantic tonight with... Is this even real? Is this a real ad? No, get out of here. Well, once again, that's gonna do it. I hope you enjoyed this video. It was really a lot of fun to make. If you did, make sure to give it a thumbs up and make sure you subscribe because when you subscribe to my channel, you are automatically a member of my band. And together, we're gonna form the largest band uh, in the world? No, the galaxy. Let's go for the galaxy. Suck it, Mars. We're coming for you. Uh, if you don't play an instrument, you can still subscribe too. Someone will teach you. We don't have a name yet. Uh, we don't have any gigs. We don't have a rehearsal schedule, but that's fine. We'll figure it out. Bye.